In this video, I am going to show you how to assemble the base unit cup tisserie kit that uh, has the two shafts that will do four cups. And let me get started on that. This is what comes in the base unit cup tisserie kit. You have a baggie that has synthetic lubricant and your hardware. There's the screws and nuts and little washers that are used as spacers. Here is your main rotisserie gear. This connects to the rotisserie shaft. There's currently a covering, a protective covering for when you manufacture so you don't scratch the acrylic. Uh, this can be peeled off. Uh, let's see, this is the shaft gear that the PVC goes through. There's two of these in the kit. This is an assembly jig. I'll show you how to use that a little bit later in the video. This is another assembly jig and I'll show you how to use that later in the video. This is the rotisserie motor mount plate and currently this only works with two rotisserie motors that I've tried it with. I had to make slight adjustments on the hole sizes just so it would fit those two. Uncertain what other motors it'll work with and I have plans to make different plates for different motors if people require them later on if there's enough demand for this stuff. These are spacers. There should be a total of eight of these. And this is the front plate right here. And it has the protective coating on it. It'll either be a blue coating like, like the uh, rotisserie mount, motor mount plate had, or it'll be a paper coating like this is. And this is the back plate. And then you get two PVC pipes, the rotisserie motor shaft, and a brush for putting the lubricant on. I'm going to go ahead and start assembly and we'll start with one of the calibration jigs that I created so that we can get the gears in the exact place they need to be. Alright, so you'll have to apply uh, cyanoacrylic glue. Um, any kind of good super glue will work. And this one's just one of the Harbor Freight ones. And I'll show you this is for the main shafts, for the, for the PVC shafts. This is a calibration jig I made. And you don't peel the protective coating off of it, you just put it together like that. Slides together like that. Just slide the PVC pipe in there, and it'll stop at the bottom. And then your gear will slide on and stop here. Let me put that on. Don't take the protective coating off yet. And this should be a very tight fit. Um, some pipes will be a little bit looser than others, but it should be a fairly snug fit. And you should see that this will keep the pipe perpendicular to the gear. And then you take your super glue and just put a very small drop on the pipe in four places or so. And then you just let that set up for about 15-20 minutes and get back to it. So we're going to stop the video and then we'll get back to this after this super glue sets. Alright, so one thing before I stop the video, I just restarted it, is you can just blow the super glue around if it's kind of puddling. Just to get it to spread around the pipe. And that should get it nice and evenly spread around the edges of the pipe. And let's see if I can pick the pipe up and show you what it looks like. I don't know if the camera is focusing well enough to see it, but the super glue should be spread nice and evenly around the edges of the pipe. And we're just going to let that set up and leave it sitting in this jig. Make sure that it's, the gear is flat in the jig. And let me stop the video and we'll get back to it in about 15-20 minutes. Alright, so I've waited 15 minutes and we're going to take this out of the jig. And what you want to do now is get at the edge of the paper or the plastic that's on the gear. 
and then start to peel it up. It may tear like this, no big deal. It's just peeling it off little by little. Some of this will stick in the corners here. You'll have to get like an X-Acto knife and peel that out. I'm going to go grab one real quick. Okay, get the X-Acto knife and just get right under the edge of those pieces that stuck on the corners. This is where the super glue was on top of the paper. So that's why it's kind of sticking like that. And this pills away little by little. Alright, and then the back side. This is hard to get your fingernails under the edges of this paper. So all this does is protects the uh, acrylic from being scratched. And then we also used it to protect the acrylic from getting super glue all over it when we glued this to the shaft. carefully and patiently pull the paper off. And that's what it looks like with the gear attached to the, sh the shaft, the PVC shaft. The super glue is in there good enough that it is not going to move. And I'm just going to go ahead and do the next one. And I might just speed that part of the video up because there's no reason for you guys to watch it twice. And then after I complete the next one, we'll go to the rotisserie drive shaft. Just gonna let it set here for a good 15 minutes and then we'll get back to it. All right, so the super glue is set up and I'm gonna peel the paper off of this. I'm not gonna put you guys through watching all that. But when you get done with the second gear from the base unit, you wanna take your assembly jig apart and store it somewhere because you're gonna need this if you're going to buy an add-on kit. This is what will be um, used to assemble your add-on kit. These will not be included with the add-on kit. Um, there will be an option to purchase these separately if you lose it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and peel that paper off and then we'll move on to the rotisserie drive after that. Okay, so when you're done peeling the paper off, it should be nice and clean. And you can just double check to make sure that the uh, super glue is strong. Just give it a little twist. Don't uh, 
flex it really hard because you can actually snap the acrylic. Um, just give it a little tiny twist. And same with the other one. Make sure it's clean of all the paper and um, sticky stuff that held the paper on or the plastic. So for the rotisserie shaft, I made this little assembly jig. Don't take the paper off of it, but it just slides together. Should be a good fit. And then you take the piece of metal that has, um, that's the square metal, and then it has this sanded end where the ends are kind of rounded off just a little bit where I cut it. And then you take the gear, and this should be a, an okay fit. It shouldn't be super tight like the PVC, but just put the shaft through, set it in the jig, and then slide the gear down, and it should sit flush like this. And what this does is it sets the depth that you're going to need for the rotisserie motor. And then we're going to go through the same gluing procedure we did with the other gears. But since it's such a loose fit on this, you have to be careful not to squeeze a whole bunch of glue out. Just a little tiny bit in the corners should do it. And we'll let this set up for a good 20 minutes. And uh, I'm going to blow it around the same way. that should get it nice and uh, spread around and we can just pick it up and look at it real quick. You should see a nice even placement of super glue on there. And then just leave it sitting in this jig that will guarantee that it's as close to um, straight as it should be on that shaft. And we'll get back to that in about 20 minutes. Alright, so that super glue is set up. Um, you can just pull the assembly jig apart. Be careful not to snap it. Um, just put that away with the other jig. And then just peel the paper off. And I will not sh have you guys watch me peeling the paper off, so I'm going to do that right now. So this is what it looks like when it's done with the paper peeling off of it. And that concludes assembling the three shafts that are required for the base unit. And I've peeled the paper off of the motor mount plate, so you don't have to wait for that. And this is the rotisserie motor, and this is what they look like pretty much. This is the one that's on Amazon for $24 that I designed this motor mount plate to mount to. And what we're going to do is remove this little metal plate that's on the rotisserie motor along with the three spacers that's on it. They're not needed for the rotis cup tisserie. So pull these three screws out. And then there's these three spacers. Just remove the spacers. Now you can accidentally just knock this thing apart now that the screws are out and what will happen is this little shaft can come off of the motor that's in there. Just make sure it goes back on and these holes line up. So we can just take these, the three spacers and the metal plate and throw it in the box that the uh, came, came in. Just in case anything goes wrong with your motor that way you can return it. Um, just put it back together. But we're just going to take the motor mount plate and line it up with the holes and finger start the screws one at a time. And then when you snug these screws down, just do them finger tight. So when they stop turning, just give them a little twist with two fingers. 
don't over tighten them because you can shatter the acrylic if you over tighten them. that should be good enough. So let's go ahead and take the paper off of the back and front plates and then we'll restart the video in a couple minutes here when I get that done. Alright so I finished peeling the paper or plastic depending on what your kit has uh, off of these little spacers and what we're going to do is take the four that go around the rotisserie mount point so you know this is the back plate because it has the rotisserie screw holes for the screws for the rotisserie mount, mount plate to recess into. And what we're going to do is we're going to glue four of these to where the rotisserie mount plate goes. This makes it easier to disassemble and reassemble later on. But we're not going to glue the ones that go on the sides here because those may be removed for expansion later on. But this will make removing your rotisserie mount plate, if something goes wrong with your motor, a lot easier. And you don't have to dig around to get the, um, these uh, little um, spacers aligned after you take it apart. It just makes it easier later on, if you ever have to disassemble it. But what we're going to do is take these four little washers and line them up with these. And then we're going to dab a little drop of super glue after we line these guys up. There's the fourth one. And then to make sure they're aligned, we'll just drop a screw into each hole and just make sure they're just nice and straight. You just kind of want to check them from the top, too. You don't have to glue these in if you don't feel like uh, risking alignment with these but I just do this so it's a lot easier to to take it apart later. So just make sure everything is nice and straight from a vertical view and just a little tiny drop of super glue is all it takes. And just one drop on the edges, just one edge, because all you're doing is trying to hold this stuff together when you're disassembling it and reassembling it. And if the thing moves when you're putting the super glue on it, you can just kind of move it around if you need to. That super glue sets pretty quick too on this acrylic. But I'm going to let this dry and we'll get back to this in about 10 minutes. That's maybe 15 minutes. Okay, while waiting for this super glue to cure on these spacers, I'm going to take the little brush and then take a pair of scissors and cut it off so it's about a quarter inch long. That'll make working with the brush a little bit easier when you're dipping it into the synthetic grease which is in this little container here, this little vial. And this grease is um, synthetic and it's compatible with the acrylic and the PVC. And we're going to apply that to the shafts in a couple minutes here. Let me uh, go cut the brush a little bit shorter. So I just cut it shorter and then uh, make sure that uh, there's no free um, hairs laying around on it. That way when you go to brush the grease on it, it doesn't have little hairs on the shafts. So we can lubricate these, these gears real quick while we're waiting for that super glue to set up. Take the cap off and dip it into the grease. And what you're going to do is just apply a bead of, of glue um, grease around the edge of the shaft here on both sides. And there's one of those 
those little pesky little hairs. I'm going to pull that off, make sure that comes off. So that shaft's done, and do the uh, rotisserie shaft. And the other PVC shaft here. again. The problem with cutting this brush a little short is all this hair comes loose. Just dig that off of there. And then we're going to take just a little bit of it. Well, I'll wait and do that till after we put the gears down onto the plate. So what you're going to want to do is now take the rotisserie shaft and just kind of set it down. Um, get two, th two um, spacers to just set the uh, back plate on. Let me go find something real quick. Hold on. It has to be longer than um, the shaft, so it has to be about six inches, the spacers. So what I went and found that I think should work fine is some drinking bottle. Uh, water bottles and we're just going to set these up so that they kind of just hold the whole plate up in the air and I'm going to readjust the uh, tripod so that the camera is viewing it correctly and it's just a place for the the uh, shafts to stick through it's nothing nothing important that has to be critical so readjust the tripod a little bit. Okay, so back to putting the shaft on. So I see a little bit of debris on the back side of the uh, plate because these acrylic plates are very staticky. Um, just make sure there's nothing sandwiched on the top side of it. It looks clean on the top side. Because whatever you pinch in here is going to be stuck in here and grinding against your gears. And we're just going to take our gears and just set them down in this plate as it's sitting up in the air. And then we're going to go back to our brush with the grease on it and just stick a little bit where the uh, gears go. You don't have to put it on every one of them, just put a little bit on each one of them, each uh, gear. Because as it rotates around, it'll slowly spread the grease around. And you don't want to use all of your grease because you're going to need to periodically take the unit apart and regrease it maybe every maybe like 60 hours of operation or so it's kind of just when the thing starts squeaking and you can we can turn the gears by hand here kind of get this to kind of spread around a little bit no big deal and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the top plate and just slide it over the top Make sure everything lines up. And then we're going to have to take these little guys with the um, washers and slide them in here. And 
this is probably the hardest thing is just making sure everything is straight and lined up. slide those little uh, washers so that the holes are lined up enough. I'm going to move the water bottles a little bit so that I can have access to the screw shafts and we're going to drop the screw shafts, all eight of them in. Well, everything's lined up. Nope, drop that on the floor. Put it in the last one. And we're going to put the nuts on the four outer ones here. Just start them. Don't have to Screw them all the way in, just start them like three or four turns. And then you can take the rotisserie mount plate. Stick it on the back side here. Line the shaft up to it. And then kind of have to get those screws to line up to the holes. And then start each nut one at a time. Now that one's on there, I don't have to hold it in place anymore. And then we're just going to go around and tighten these all finger tight. I'm going to try and raise the camera up a little bit more. Sorry if you guys can't see everything that's going on here. But just finger tight, nothing tighter. You don't need the water bottles anymore, so we can take those out. That was just to kind of keep it up so we can get the shafts lined up and dropped into place. Checking everything. That one's still loose. And that pretty much concludes the uh, assembly. Uh, you're going to want to take your brush and kind of clean it up in that vial. the vial away and then put this in a Ziploc bag with the vial so that it's not getting grease all over everything. But that concludes the assembly of this unit and then 
the next thing you're going to want to do is come up with whatever you're mounting it to. Um, my plan is just to take some little three inch pieces of um, one by twos and screw them down to the workbench and just make it so this fits between it um, the front and back side and that'll just hold it in place as it's sitting here. Let's turn this on and see how it works if it's actually running. Turn the switch on. Get this cord out of the way. And there it goes. So you're going to want to run it for a little while and let that grease kind of just uh, work its way around, maybe like half an hour or so before you start using it. And then you can see there's a little bit of play with the spacers in here. And that should be perfectly fine. And the nice thing is when you want to replace the rotisserie motor, if you ever have a problem with it, is you just take these four screws out, pull the back plate off, and then you can replace the rotisserie motor if you have to. And anyways, thanks for watching. And if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next video. And hopefully I'll be doing, the, in the near future, the assembly for the add-on units and I'll do the single shaft unit first and I'll catch you guys later.